morning to everyone at CMCC Foundation. My research is focused on the interaction between climate and terrestrial ecosystems by using models. Today, I will tell you something about our activities that have links with the digitalization, in particular, for that concerning climate change and forest ecosystem services that falls in the application scenarios for forest management, monitoring, and decision making described in the DCIRA paper on K digital game changers of forestry. To be honest, I was hesitant if putting this first slide at the beginning or at the end, but I think that it is important to start mentioning the ambitious uh, Destination Heart Initiative, which is trying to be in line with the European Commission Green Deal and digital strategies, while also linking to the Horizon Europe Research Innovation Program with the, uh, with the space program and, the, and also with the recovery and the resilience fund plans. Destination Earth to be implemented from this year uh, to uh, around 2030 aims at developing a high precision digital twin, which means a replica of our planet in order to understand the past, monitor the present and predict the interacting natural processes and the human dynamics. So untapping the potential of the synergistic use of remote to proximal to ground sensing of in situ monitoring and fit campaigns and the various type of um, models from empirical models to process based to machine learning algorithm and so on. And this project was aimed at analyzing mitigation and adaptation strategies for Mediterranean forest ecosystem services by translating uh, results from models, uh, from models that reproduce uh, uh, forest growth into useful information to assess, monitor, and predict uh, forest production, uh, carbon cycle, up to validate uh, at the end of the project, uh, a business model to foster sustainable management of forest ecosystem, considering also the opportunity coming from uh, forest certification schemes and their consideration of uh, forest ecosystem services. The study site was the Comunelli di Ferriere Consortium in Italy that is uh, putting together collective ownership uh, within the Ferriere municipality in the region Emilia Romagna in Northern Italy, where there is the highest percentage of certified forest. The um, uh, Comunelli comprise more than 5,000 hectares and 90% more or less uh, are occupied by trees and the remainder uh, mostly by meadow and pasture. The consortium forests are mainly characterized by coppices and high forests and they host uh, different uh, species. In the project, a forest ecosystem model that is hybrid between process-based and empirical approach was the, uh, that was developed until a few years ago at CMCC was applied to simulate water, energy, and carbon fluxes. Uh, this in terms of, uh, of uh, gross primary production and net primary production, and also to simulate the carbon partitioning and allocation the main plant uh, com compartments, like for example, uh, stem, branches, leaves, uh, and so on. As input, some uh, stand um, data are required to initialize the model, but also to be used as benchmark for uh, parameter calibration. And then the model is also able uh, to consider management practices applied on the stand, like for example, tree, tree cuttings, in order to project so the uh, effect of forest growth or, and uh, carbon uh, sequestration. Other site data refer, for example, to um, um, elevation, so to topography, and uh, also to soil attributes. But um, the most important data are related to time series of uh, daily time series of meteorological variables that uh, drive the principal processes for uh, for forest. All data, of course, uh, need to be 
to be harmonized, to be post-processed, to feed the model. And then uh, the model allows simulation of forest processes that you can imagine uh, similar to, to, to those uh, shown in this animation, even if this animation refers to, to another, another uh, model. And um, the stand information useful that were useful for model initialization and parameterization uh, were, uh, was collected in 2017 and referred to the, for example, to the trunk diameter, to the age of trees, to the number of trees per hectare, so the mean tree age uh, and the species and other information, for example, if uh, co co coffee, coffees or I forests. And also information about the type of management were collected, for example, about the intensity or frequency of cutting from a total uh, initial number of 144 sampling areas at the end 50 were suitable uh, in order to feed the, the model in terms of uh, information uh, good information available then the five meters um, resolution uh, digital elevation model produced by Emilia Romagna region was selected to provide the needed information about the altitude, for example, while soil parameters were taken from a global uh, data set, the soil grid data set at 250 meter resolution. So uh, this is why I talked before about the need to harmonize to process data in order to make data similar in terms of uh, spatial uh, resolution. Then uh, we also use the CO2 concentration at here uh, yearly level, but uh, not a specialized level. So we had just one number for each, for each year. And uh, concerning uh, climate data, we considered the, the Eurocord experiment uh, that provide the future simulation uh, in terms of a possible future climate. Uh, the resolution is over Europe uh, around 12 kilometers. And uh, this experiment provides different global models that force different regional models. So models that are able to, to increase the, the resolution at a very, very detailed uh, level. And then also this model, this simulation consider different uh, representative concentration pathways that are uh, assumption about the concentration of greenhouse gas for the future consider different uh, uh, possible development uh, like the te technological development or uh, different care of the, of the planet. And uh, using different simulation is important in order to take into account that the, there is uncertainty about the future. So we cannot consider uh, only one, uh, one scenarios. In total, we conducted uh, uh, 1,600 simulation from 2017, that was the year in which we were able to initialize the model up to the end of the century. This number of simulation is a combination of the number of sampling areas, the number of model chains, the number of concentration scenarios that uh, we consider for greenhouse gas, and also the possibility to switch on and off the management related to the frequency and intensity of uh, cuttings for the different uh, species that were uh, simulated. At the end, the results were analyzed in climatological terms. So uh, considering three 20 years period, uh, one related more or less uh, to the present time and centered on uh, 2027, then a near future period centered on 2050, and then a far future period uh, representing 2019. And then uh, from the model output, there uh, were a huge amount of data we considered two main indicators, the carbon use efficiency and the water use efficiency. The first one represents the fraction of photosynthesis not used for plant respiration. So it is uh, the amount of carbon get, that is allocated to the biomass. Then the other indicator, the water use efficiency, is the tree, represent the tree productivity with respect to evapotranspiration, which means the carbon uptake per unit of water loss. The indicators decrease or increase in the future is a proxy, respectively, of less or more functioning forests and thus of their ability 
to adapt to changing environmental condition, to changing uh, climate condition. Just uh, uh, an example of results, looking at uh, carbon use efficiency, what the processes are for now better represented, better reproduced in the model with respect to the reproduction of the water cycle. We can see that uh, it's the decrease of this indicator from the present time to the far future is uh, lower if uh, management is applied because uh, uh, it uh, range from uh, minus 52% without management and then it is reduced to minus 37% in, in case of applying uh, forest management. Briefly, I want to highlight also that, however, advanced models in order to reproduce eco terrestrial ecosystem, ecosystem, in this case forest, um, this task of advanced model is not fully independent from collecting new and improved data from different sources that could be in situ measurement, satellite-based earth observation, because these data are important to initialize the model uh, to, in order to start as close as possible to the real condition, to calibrate the model parameters and also for validation. Example of this uh, data on which we are in particular working on uh, um, ACMC are measurement of greenhouse gas fluxes uh, through the head covariance technique uh, and uh, that in Europe uh, is conducted under the coordinated integrated carbon observation system ICOS network for which at CMCC we coordinate together with the University of Tusha the ecosystem thematic center so the thematic center that standardized data post-process data about ecosystems and the ICOS is also part of a global network that is FLAXNET in which uh, there are currently effort in order to homogenize, to harmonize the data in terms of uh, policy, license, uh, standards for um, metadata, format and so on, in order to serve a wide community. Then, since several years, we are establishing also a network of um, ecophysiological monitoring uh, made of um, small devices multi with a multi-parametric sensor based on the Internet of Things to study, for example, some processes in the tree, like, for example, the sap flow and the quality of a canopy due to the transmission of light through the, through the canopy. And uh, in this case, uh, we conducted, we are conducting some case studies in Italy uh, for forestry, also in uh, collaboration uh, with uh, PFC Italy. Uh, to conclude, to give some um, input, maybe uh, from our experience in terms of application of models in order to monitor and simulate the future, we learned that uh, digitalization for the forestry sector can, can learn or can benefit from um, the synergistic use of uh, uh, multi-source monitoring data in situ, satellite, drones, aerial data, but also combined with the different modeling approach from statistical to more complex approach like machine learning, uh, uh, for example, but also uh, with the um, process-based model that represented the physics of the different ecosystems that uh, uh, we want to, to reproduce. Then uh, we also understood that the large investment uh, that are uh, starting uh, are needed in terms of high performance computing and data storage infrastructure in order to cover at very high spatial and temporal resolution, both wide, wide areas, but also long period. So for now, I presented, for example, uh, a case study for a single site, but in order to cover as much as possible wide areas and the long period of time, of course, the computing resources are, are important. Uh, last but not least, it is very important the use of indicators that are able to condense 
huge amount of data, often very difficult to understand, often uh, complicated for not expert uh, user, indicators that uh, condense, that synthesize the output from models into user tailored information. This is possible through co-design, co-production, and but also co-evaluation of the indicators directly with user under an agile approach. That means um, to have uh, short feedback loops uh, in order to enable uh, real interaction with user and understand step-by-step step which could be the, the more effective and efficient information that science could create. So thank you for your attention and also thank you to my colleague uh, from the Madame's AX uh, project. <laughs>